and the mortgage professionals. So I'm yeah. learning something too. Uh, and, I, and I appreciate that. So people laugh when I say that these are the five questions that, I, that works for me. This is actually what's worked for me. And I really don't divert from this. It's kind of like a tire. When you think tire, what do you think? Firestone, you think Michelin. Maybe you think Goodyear, right? But the concept is still the same. The tire is round. So why divert from it? So for me, these are the questions that most people don't ask when it comes to distressed real estate. And the, the simple answer is why they don't do it is because they've never been properly trained. Their brokers don't want them to go after anything but the low-hanging fruit. I have investor, not, let me, let me back up. Nine out of 10 real estate agents won't do, get involved in short sales. I would say probably about 70% of investors probably will do it, maybe maybe 60, but it's about a 60, 40 split between doing it and 40% not going after short sales. They feel like they'll never get done. So they go to wholesalers that may or may not have done a short sale. Think about that, because I'm sure everybody's thought about that in the past. So let's get into the five questions that I go over with people. And I'm just going to like talk like I normally talk. So let's play Chris and, and, and Jasmine, our, our husband and wife. You're a very lucky man, Chris. I just got promoted. I'm, I'm pretty jacked about that. 100%. <laughs> so what I would ask people is, I would ask them the scenario. They tell me what's going on. We're not going to bore everybody with the details. You know what I should have done tonight? I should have done a live call. That would have been amazing if I did an actual live call and people could actually put me in the hot seat. I mean, I'm being open, honest, and transparent. When Before my company started back in 2016, I, you know, my story, whatever, I was a nurse and struggling single mom. I had a property and you know my story. I short sell that property. You can ask me these questions and I can answer honestly as an example because I was clueless and I kept getting mailers and I kept getting phone calls by these men trying to buy my house because my tenants didn't pay the rent and I couldn't afford both my mortgage and the rent I was paying. So let's do this and I'll, I'll give you the answers to those questions. I appreciate you know, that. This is before we got married. Right. And then I met a rich man called Dr. Boyan. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Guys, they see sparks flying. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, you know, so these are really the five core things I talk about. So, you know, I ask, what is your current situation? Mm. And then I and I and I want to know generally, because for me, I have to know whether I can help or not, because I don't know what they're gonna say, right? I don't work for Dion Warwick Psychic Network. So I don't have that kind of brain power. So I need them to kind of tell me, you know, what is your current situation? And how can I ask? Be honest and, and when you're asking these questions, because the facts are going to tell us where we're going to go. And it's really going to give us a baseline, right? In a perfect world, what could I do to help? Honestly, like Chris, what could I do to help? Jasmine, we don't want distress. The, to, to to affect your marriage. So guys, collectively, I, I know we're, we're doing this. Tell me, what, what could I do to help? Like something like that obviously would make sense. You know? Yep. It, if I could help you avoid foreclosure, honestly, foreclosure should be your last option. What can I do personally to help it so you can avoid foreclosure? Because, you know, uh, uh, Walter Smith told me that I should reach out to you and speak with you guys directly. I asked Walter Smith to be on the call, but he said he couldn't do it, and that's fine. I'll report back to him afterwards. But you know, do you want like do you want to have a foreclosure on your credit? You're both young enough; like you could go, you could purchase another property. What's the long term goal here? Then I shut up. Then I hear whatever it is that I need to hear from people. This is something, this is, when I say this, it's usually game over, right? Do you have a, a safe place to move? I need to know before I get involved in this, do you have a game plan? Because it's important for me. I don't want to just do a short sell on the property and then you tell me when we get an approval letter, not if, when we get an approval letter, 
Do you have a place to go? Do you guys have a plan for that? And then they tell me about that type of stuff because it's important. What am I doing with these people? I'm building rapport. And I'm going to say this so everybody understands. For me, you know, my success rate is, is actually very high in talking to people on the telephone. Without meeting somebody, I'm usually about an 80 to 85% ratio locking these people down. And then the real estate agents go, okay, this is great. So, okay, if they're on the call, they say, okay, wh what the fuck just happened here? And I'm like, well, they're going to do a short sale. Okay, so I got to get my packet together. I get comps together. I'm like, that's cool. You can do all that, but bring the listing paperwork because they're going to list their house. And people are astonished. Here's why I'm not. I'm bored even talking about this right now because this is my life. Day in and day out, this is what I do to help people. Whether you're a real estate agent, whether you're an investor, whether you're an actual homeowner, whether you're an attorney, title company, whatever it is, mortgage professional, you got to have a plan. Once that plan's in place and they get it and they understand it, it's not I'm going in for the kill. And I'm going, there's nothing to sell here. You're offering a service that makes sense. Now, what I do is different. I tell people, I almost pull the rug out underneath and I say, before you say yes, go on social media and check me out. Check out Real Estate Recovery Group. My name is Matthew Marinoff. You can go to matthewmarinoff.com. It has all my social media on there. And then you let me know if it's something you feel comfortable with. Most of the time, it's a green light, let's run. It's, can I get my attorney on the phone? Can I have my son, my daughter, my granddaughter, whatever it is? They just want to hear it. And they want to say, hey, I'm not crazy. This guy generally wants to try to help us, right? The answer is yes. So that's really important. People say to me all the time, well, what about what the bank thinks? Who gives a shit what the bank thinks? If you're in a financial situation and you can't pay your mortgage, you know what's important? Food on the table and keeping your utilities on. If you can do that and get to the next phase of where you need to be, you're really headed of the game. If you can't, then we got problems here. So it's important. People need to know, do they have a place to go? And that you have a game plan because they're looking to you for a game plan. Now, I can pull this off because I've probably done this thousands of times talking to people on, on the telephone. I don't really even leave my house anymore. I don't even know why I own like pants or shorts anymore. I don't go anywhere. I'm like, kidding. Now, Jay, Chris, what I just said right now, does it make sense that I communicate properly? It needs to it needs to be that way. But 99%, I promise you, because I've been through it, of the people that were calling did not communicate well at all. And if you personally would have called me back when I was struggling those days and actually sounded like you cared about my situation, I would have handed you that home. I had to reach out to Domingo. That's who helped me. Right. Because it was, you know, it's when you're struggling, you don't tell everybody, you know, but if really, you, get, yeah, but if you get that phone call from a trusted person with a good voice, that's really just trying to understand, right. not trying to do anything else, just trying right. to understand, I definitely would have been like, you know what, let's talk more. <laughs> so obviously I know Domingo and I know him for many years. And it was funny when I found out that you guys know everybody, just, we know the same people. So it's like, you never know who you know, who you're going to find in the industry. I'm the same person throughout whatever it is. I act the same whether my wife is with me or not. She knows I'm absolutely bananas. And that's okay. Because that makes me successful in what I do. I am the short sale savage. And I've been doing this since 2005. And this actually, believe it or not, is on the back of my shirt. It's not enough to get a restraining order. My wife says, you can't go out in public like that. People are going to take that the wrong way. But I'm like, it's real estate related. And if they care enough, they're going to ask me. And guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have a conversation. As, and I say to her, as you know, if I was in a forest by myself, I would make friends with trees. 
because I like to talk. So this is the book that I have. If you want, obviously, you know, you guys can go to Amazon. It's on there. Um, it's got an amazing amount of information in there. It's filled with a lot of stories of people that we've helped over the years. Some of them are very almost unbelievable stories. Um, there was a woman in there that I thought was a nurse. She ended up being uh, an exotic dancer because I thought she worked nights in Vegas. Who do I know? Uh, and she was never able to talk to me. And, you know, she had she she had to talk to me like mid morning, mid afternoon, or whatever it is. I should have knew something was going on when she told me uh, that six months ago earlier she transferred her Lamborghini into her sister's name. So these are some of the things that the bank is going to ask, and they're going and they're they're going to look for when you're doing a short sale, right? Current mortgage statements third-party authorization forms, loss mitigation uh, application, hardship letters. Is the, is the hardship itself permanent? Is it temporary? Depending on what we're trying to do, that's something that could really trick you up in doing a short sell and getting denied. Mon monthly, house, monthly household expenses. That's another thing. That could trip you up and trigger where you don't qualify for a short sell. It's actually really scary. Two years federal tax returns, three most recent pay stubs, literally all accounts. So I've had people, their bank statement questioned by my company. And I've actually said to them, guys, we've got time. We got to wait two months before we can start this. Because from what I see right here, if I was a lender and I saw what's going on in your bank statements, I'd be like denied. And I would streamline your property as fast as I could to a short sale. So these are all really super important. I know people gaze over these things and they talk about these things, but they really don't dive into it. I run a loss mitigation company. I love when people say, oh, oh, Matt, oh, Matt, you're a processor. No, I'm not a processor. I run a loss mitigation company. I'm, I'm a problem solver. Um, obviously, income documentation. MLS status sheets, listing agreement, purchase contracts, buyer's proof of funds, pre-qualification letter. I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen letters that crack me up. Because if you don't think that these banks don't call these phone numbers and see it's a relative related to you and call bullshit, or these uh, companies online where you can get, you know, uh, what is it, uh, a free proof of funds letters, if you don't think the banks don't know by now that some of these deals, these packages go to the bank, they're for gazes, you got nothing coming. And I know this because I'm friends with asset managers at the bank. So it cracks me up when I hear of people in the industry and I know them and I know they're not doing it the right way. I'll leave it at that. The preliminary HUD, preliminary HUD one statement obviously is a very important statement because that's the closing CD. That's the stuff that's going to make it or break it when you're trying to do a short sell. Now, these are questions, obviously, that you're gonna need to ask the seller when you're building out your packet and information that you're gonna want. How'd you hear about me? Because obviously you're gonna to wanna to talk to them and say, hey, thanks so much for the referral, I appreciate it. Which means also who referred you, their name, cell number, home number, work number, email address, the borrower's mailing address. Their borrower mailing address might not be the same as the distressed address of the property. Is that a big deal? Absolutely. Because if your home address and your mailing address is different, the bank might question that. 